get here. And, and these guys are terrific. Damon Lynn is, is here today in another great year for Damon, one of the best players in program history. First team all A son this year. Second team uh, met writers uh, for the region. Uh, so Damon had another great year and the uh, career three-point leader, active leader in the NCAA in terms of three-pointers made. So without any further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome a special guest here on the dais. Uh, he is not only a basketball aficionado and uh, a coach and a longtime follower of this program and supporter of this program, but he is the former governor of the state of New Jersey, State Senator Richard Cody. Aficionado, what is that? <laughs> we didn't speak that way for in orange. Come on, Dave. By the way, he got to do the uh, Seton Hall championship game against Villanova. The last team that beat Villanova, Seton Hall. It's all local, right? <laughs> By the way, speaking about coaching, true story. When I started coaching, I wasn't too good. So there was actually a custody uh, fight here in Essex County. So both mom and dad wanted the young boy who was 11 at the time, and finally the judge said, you know, I can't decide, I'm gonna have the young man testify. So he gets and swears him in and says, young man, do you wanna live with mom? And he says, oh, no, 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 judge, she beats me. Okay, you wanna live with dad? He says, no, no, judge, he beats me too. He says, well, who do you wanna live with? He says, I wanna live with Coach Cody, he doesn't beat anybody. <laughs> that was very simple. But it's great to be here at a great academic institution. The last time I was at one was Princeton, Doc, when I was governor. And I got up and I said, you know, I was almost a student here at Princeton, but I was 400 points short on the SAT. <laughs> and then I said, and that was just on a math side. <laughs> so it's great to be here because everything's new about NJIT. New conference, new gymnasium, new coach. And when you go to the Kennedy family, it's like the Irish hierarchy in basketball. I mean, it is what it is. And if they can't get it done, nobody can get it done. So I expect a lot of great things, Ryan. You understand? I understand. I understand. Kabish? Uh, <laughs> I understand that, pal. And by the way, the doc gave me a pin. I said, doc, I really appreciate it. I haven't been pinned since college. <laughs> but so many good things with this great guy and this great guy who have done so much for your basketball program, and more importantly, the image of this great college. I mean, people talk about it all the time. People say, oh, that's down in North. No, no, it's a great institution. Everybody says that, everybody who's gone here, all your alumni, that's why, Doc, you were raised, able to raise so much money. I mean, a bank, bank load of it. I mean, I'd say something else, but you got it done, and that's what counts. So he's the man at the head of the uh, institution who does so many things and is a great communicator, a great person, the head of a great university. So I'm gonna introduce him to the great Dr. Jew Bloom. <laughs> Bloom and Stockton now. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I can't start this event without asking the basketball team to stand, please. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Not unlike um, you've already heard, uh, this past year uh, we wound up in some of the same airports together while the team was moving around from some location to location. And the observation of seeing them in the airport with their books or listening to uh, material that they're supposed to be mastering for their classes. So this is a men's basketball team that not only are they talented athletically, but they are very talented academically. And those two talents will serve you well, men. And we are very, very proud of what you accomplished this year, what you accomplished last year, and you know where this is going, and what you're going to accomplish next year. So uh, I thank you. I thank the coaching staff and the other athletes here in the room as well. They all work very hard, and we're proud of each and every one of you. It is not easy to master calculus or differential equations or chemistry or physics, as well as all the other disciplines here. 
and then show up and practice hour after hour, travel hour after hour, and then be suited up for the game. So first and foremost, for the students here, the student athletes, it's all about you. Yes, we're building a new gym for the Kennedy clan. Oh, he's over there. <laughs> and thank you, Kennedy clan, for turning out. It's a very handsome clan that you have there, thank Brian. You. Uh, but it is for the students here at NJIT and for the community here at NJIT. So this is historic. I had a chance uh, not only to meet with Brian recently, but over the years, and I have always found him very focused. It was the first part of our conversation. What about the team? What about the students? Where do you see this going? Um, you can't yell on the sidelines. You can yell in the locker room, but you can't lie, yell on the sidelines. We'd, we like our coaches, we like our students to respect one another, to care about one another. That's what I see in our coaches, that's what I see in our students and our team members. And that's what I see in our great AD. Lenny Kaplan uh, has, uh, I won't tell the traditional story about, I found Lenny in a Quonset Hub in some <laughs> college up in Manhattan by uh, Van Cortlandt Park, I won't get into that description. Um, and we're building him a new building, too. Lenny has worked, where, is Andrew Christ here? There you go. Uh, Andrew is an alum of NJIT, he's a PE civil engineer, and without Christ and Kaplan, that could be a dance team, what do you think, <laughs> Governor? Without them, without them, uh, we wouldn't be doing all of this as quickly, and we will have a stellar facility, and I can't leave out my, where's my fundraising partner, where's Chuck Dees? who whenever I want to know anything about athletics, we could be on the road somewhere at 2 in the morning, instant information about athletics. Almost as good as Governor Cody is about athletic <laughs> knowledge. Uh, and I want to thank the governor. He has always been very supportive of this institution for decades. And he shows up here for years. And he supports this institution strenuously. He even got us when we weren't ready to play one of his favorite schools, Seat in the Hall. We'll still be talking about that someday. So this is an outstanding day for this institution. We are picking the right man for the job of head basketball coach. I asked a couple of the students, I was with one of them last night, and I said, did we make it the right decision? And it's absolute applause as I learned he is known among our students as BK. So BK, welcome. We look forward to your coaching here, your victories leading outstanding men like this. And uh, I think we have some new fans here. I haven't seen them in the stands much, <laughs> but I have a reason that they'll, to believe they'll be showing up. So I thank all of you for being here today and celebrating with us. It's another new beginning. And uh, we're building, oh, and I please <laughs> do not want to leave out Michael Siegel. Michael is our FAR, our faculty athletic representative. Um, I had shared when we were talking with Brian, this is a very outstanding place for lots of reasons, including our faculty are very, very supportive of the athletic program. A lot to do with Lenny Kaplan, a lot to do with Michael Siegel, and uh, in charge of all of this um, is Dr. Fay, who's our vice president where our athletic programs reside. So again, I thank you all for turning out. Um, I'm now going to turn it all over to Lenny Cohen. Lenny Cohen, Lenny Kaplan, another one of the tribe, right, really another right. one of the tribe. Um, I thought about keys and I thought about Cohen, I don't know why. I'm going to turn the keys of the building over to him soon and uh, we look forward to seeing you all in the old gym next year, the new gym in the following year and uh, have a great day. Joel, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. It's a beautiful day today. I am pleased and delighted to be introducing today our new head men's basketball coach, Brian Kennedy. Be you can clap, it's all right. Before I get started, I do want to thank President Bloom and my boss, Dr. Charlie Fay, Vice President of Academic Support and Student Affairs, for their ongoing support of me, the department, and our student athletes. These past couple of years have been a lot of fun for our university, our alumni, staff, students, and especially our men's basketball program. 
In many programs like ours, where some success is achieved, we always knew there'd be other potential opportunities for our head coach, Jim Engels, to move on. We are thankful for what Jimmy brought us, and we are happy for the, his new opportunity. And that being said, we must move on to the future, and the future is now. Over the past two years, we've won over 40 games, have had consecutive semifinal runs in the collegeinsider.com tournament. We are set up for success next year with an Atlantic Sun title and our first ever NCAA berth as our team goal. No pressure, Coach. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> and looking for our next basketball coach, our criteria was simple. A person of high character who understood and believed in the meaning of the word student athlete. A person who can understand the mission culture and quirkiness of NGIT. Someone with great basketball knowledge, a proven recruiter tied into the New Jersey recruiting scene, and the ability to provide some continuity for the senior-led team, keeping a culture of what our players believe in was also important. The first credible tweet of Jimmy's pending departure surfaced around 12.30 p.m. on April 1st, April Fool's Day, some joke. I was in Houston at the Final Four, my phone started buzzing, and for the most part didn't stop over the next few days. I had no idea so many people had my cell number, nor did I realize how many people knew what I looked like. <laughs> it was definitely to the amusement of my wife and kids who thought I had become the most popular guy in Houston. On one side note to all coaches, speaking on behalf of my uh, other ADs, it's not the person who has the most phone calls into the AD that gets the job. <laughs> I spoke with the team via Skype that afternoon to let them know what was going on and the next few steps that the search would be open nationally, be thorough, and move quickly. I asked for their trust and patience. I gave them my cell number as I wanted to hear from them as well. And boy, did I. My next call was to Coach Kennedy to let him know he was on my short list, and no matter what rumors he may hear, he would get his, short, his shot upon my return. After meeting with and or speaking with over 100 people at the Final Four, whether agents, references, or individual candidates, there was no doubt in my mind the right man for this job was on campus already. Brian Kennedy has been such a big part of bringing us where we are today. He has been a key force in our recruiting and development of our current student athletes on our, on our basketball team. Not only does he have the basketball knowledge we want, he has strong recruiting ties that are important for us and believe he will re represent our university in a way that we expect and need. Lastly, he has the full support of the current team and will bring the continuity we seek. It is for that reason that we appoint him as our new basketball leader with our full confidence in his ability to continue the momentum that has begun to build. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce the 11th head coach and NGIT, 11th head men's basketball coach in NGIT, Brian Kennedy. First off, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Um, uh, I stand here uh, humbled, honored, and so excited to be uh, the new head men's basketball coach here at New Jersey Institute of Technology. Um, before we get started, um, I wanted to just thank our, our fantastic president, Dr. Joel Bloom. Uh, I've been on campus now four years, going on my fifth year. And the leadership uh, that Dr. Bloom brings to the campus is, um, is second to none. There's an excitement, a, uh, what I like to call a vibe on campus um, here at NJIT that's, it seems to be, it seems to be uh, infectious throughout the student body. And uh, there's some great buildings going up on campus, which everybody can see from afar, but it's, it's the inside those buildings, it's the people of NJIT that Dr. Bloom has assembled, which really makes this a great university. So, Dr. Bloom, I know we have the new athletic building coming on, but we're finishing Central, Central High School. We have the Albert Dorman, uh, Dorfman dorms uh, that have just been brought up. We have the new Science and Life building going up. So, uh, kudos to everything that you and, and, and our senior administration here have brought to the university.
Next up, I want to thank Dr. Charlie Fay, um, our, our Vice President for Academic Support and Student Affairs here at the university. Um, the student body here, especially the uh, athletic uh, student body, as, as, as Dr. Bloom has said, they face, they face a challenge here. Um, our student athletes here at NJIT are true student athletes. They come here to the university first as students and then as athletes. And it's not easy when you're, uh, as Dr. Bloom has said, when you're taking calculus or, or whatever it is in the engineering department, electrical engineering, um, to find the time to be able to dedicate to your sport and your love, um, you know, and it shows throughout our athletic department uh, with our coaches, fellow coaches that we have here, and all the student athletes, uh, you are to be commended for everything that you do for the university. So I want to thank all my fellow coaches here and all the student athletes. And next up, my leader, my boss, uh, Mr. Leonard Kaplan, who's the Assistant Vice President and Director of Athletics. Um, what he has done here at NJIT is is nothing short of, uh, of phenomenal, I'll say it that way. Um, you know, bringing the university from the Division II level uh, up to the Division I level, um, getting this new building um, already underway for those, uh, you know, I know a lot of universities say they're gonna build a building, and, but until the uh, shovel goes in the dirt, um, you know, you never know. But the building is well underway here. We see the construction every day as we pass going to our offices, um, but assembling, you know, such a great crew over there um, in the athletic department. Kudos to, uh, to, to, to you, Lenny, and everything that you've done. Um, while this is my first head coaching job, I've, I've been preparing my whole life uh, to be a head coach. And I know some people say that, but um, I'm gonna just explain a little bit of my background here uh, for those of you who don't know. Um, then I think you'll see what I mean by saying prepared for my whole life. Um, our, f our family, uh, started by my father, uh, Bob Kennedy, who's no longer with us. Um, he was a high school coach and a college basketball coach. Um, he started a basketball camp up in the Pocono Mountains 53 years ago, uh, back when there were no basketball camps. So I literally grew up every summer um, at the basketball camp listening to coaches, Hall of Fame coaches such as Bob Knight, Lou Carnesecca, Jim Valvano, Roly Massimino, um, speak, learn from them, um, followed them around camp, studied them, studied all their habits and everything that they did. So um, from the time I was born up until now, you know, this is a culmination of a lifetime of, 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 of basketball. Um, I was very fortunate um, in my playing days to play under some of the, some great, great coaches who I've learned from. Um, coach Ed Wisolinski, who's a Hall of Fame high school coach. I played for him at Christian Brothers Academy at CBA. Uh, played for Pete Carrill at Princeton University, who's a, a, a Naismith Hall of Famer. Played for a gentleman by the name of Wayne Zoak. Coach, I know you're watching down in Florida. Um, uh, so, uh, learned so much from Wayne. Um, I've learned so much from my uncle Patrick Kennedy, who I work with out at uh, DePaul University. Uh, he was a Division I head coach for 31 years. Um, he's got 489 Division I uh, victories underneath his belt. Um, and last but not least, uh, Coach Engels. Um, four years ago when Jim approached me, uh, I had left Wall Street and wanted to get back into coaching. And Jim had approached me uh, about coming to NJIT. Um, and I have to be honest, at first I did not know much about NJIT. Uh, I came up to visit the campus and uh, I was blown away. Uh, I walked around, I saw the, the trees and the grass, and I had no idea <laughs> that was here in Newark, New Jersey, in University Heights. Um, and I, I, I sat down with Jim, and I saw his vision, which he had for, for NJIT, uh, building into the future. Um, we formed a partnership, um, and over the next four years, we got a chance to, to understand each other, and work with each other, and uh, I can't thank Jim enough for giving me the opportunity, and uh, for also for laying the groundwork um, to to some great success here at NJIT. 
I, I was listening to a press conference the other day when uh, Tubby Smith got named the head coach at, at Memphis University. Uh, Tubby Smith's one of the great coaches. He just got the John Wooden Award for the National, or for a Lifetime Achievement Award for, for coaching. Uh, Tubby's been, uh, been a head coach for 30 some years. And one of the reporters asked him what the key to success at Memphis was gonna be. And he, he said, uh, he said at every program that he's been at, uh, from Tulsa to Georgia uh, to Kentucky to Minnesota to Texas Tech and at Memphis, he said the key to success is to continue and grow and build upon your values and your, your vision for success. So in speaking with, with, with Lenny and, and Dr. Bloom and Jim, that is my goal here, okay? We're, we are gonna continue to build upon the success that we've had here at the university. And we're gonna do that, I'm gonna do that by assembling a first-rate professional staff, okay? These professionals are gonna be here to serve the university, the community, and our players. I'm gonna do everything I can to attract the best possible candidates, um, two of our assistant coaches are staying here with me. Um, one is by the name of Kim Waiters, and Kim is actually not here with us today. He's on the road in Texas already recruiting. Um, and our other staff member is Andrew McGlynn. Andrew, you want to st step right up here? <laughs> Andrew's a young man who's a rising star in the business. Um, he's put his time in at... Uh, as a, as, as a uh, graduate assistant, both at Towson University and University of Detroit. Um, he came to us last year from LaSalle University where they had a great run into the Sweet 16 and he's done a fabulous job, so I'm very happy to have him, him aboard uh, with us. Now, as far as our recruiting uh, philosophy, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna continue to recruit the way we've always recruited. First and foremost, we're gonna recruit students. Then we're gonna recruit athletes and I think we've proven to the not only to the uh, New York metropolitan area New Jersey and the whole country that you can receive a world-class education here at NJIT and also play one of the top national schedules against some of the best teams in the country as far as basketball is concerned all right we want kids here with the same values goals ambitions that we share as a coaching staff Okay, we want what I call contenders, not pretenders. Okay, the guys on the team know what I'm talking about. And uh, we, we will continue to recruit that same type of student athlete that has made everyone here at the university so proud over these last few years. And that will not change. I want to thank some of the former players that I was able to coach here. I want to thank all of the former players at NJIT. Uh, from years back to where we are now. Um, everybody has a hand in this most recent success. Um, I'd like to thank some of the players I had the great honor to coach here who have gone on to graduate. Chris Flores, P.J. Miller, Ryan Woods, Sean McCarthy, Quentin Bastain, Daquan Holiday, Odera Nueke, Kai Howard, Wynn Willis, and Emmanuel Salantakis. Um, Forever grateful for you guys for what you've done, not only for me, but the university here itself. Um, two things that I always like to preach is, is a college basketball team is about family. And you always have, as a coach, you always have two families. You have your own family and you have your, uh, your adopted family or your inherited family from the basketball team. Um, We've had the great honor of having some of the best student athletes I've ever been around. And uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge them right now. Terrence Smith, okay, my first recruiting class that I had here, Damon Lynn, Tim Coleman, Rob Yukawuba, Vlad Shustoff, Osa Izevubwa, CJ Flea Jenkins, James McMillan, Abdul Lewis, Riley Walsh, Mohammed Bendari, Seth Callahan, and Derek. Where are you, Derek? Are you in there? All right. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys would just take a quick stand up. Stand up again. All 
All right, we have, now that Lenny's put, it, put the pressure on us, we have a lot of things that we need to, we need to finish up here. But, uh, you know, without you guys, I won't be here. Um, as you know, it's all about you. It's not about us. It's all about you as the student athletes. Um, just a few more thank yous I want to I want to put out there, and please forgive me if I if I miss miss anybody. I'm apologizing beforehand. Um, when I was recruiting one of the student athletes, uh, Dr. Bloom, one of the parents had a great question for me. Um, she asked, "What what do you think is NJIT's you know most redeeming quality?" And I, I thought about it, and I said, let me get back to you on that. So the next day, I came back, and I said, you know what? I have the answer for you. It's our people. And I just want to thank some of the people here at NJIT that have, have been so helpful to me uh, over the course of the last few, uh, few years. Uh, Andrew Schwartz, who's uh, our, our associate uh, athletic director, um, his crew, Joe Vaca, Casey McDonald, and Carrie Fetter. Uh, Jason Smichael, who's in our compliance office, um, two of my mentors here on campus, Sandra Taylor and Mike Spisto, um, Billy McDermott and Bob English, two of our biggest fans, um, and Billy's always at the, at the ready to sit down with recruits and their parents. Can't thank you guys enough for everything you've done. Uh, Marjorie Perry from our Board of Overseers. Uh, Marjorie has become a great supporter over the last few years and really, uh, really helping our guys, um, especially when they're, when they're done. She's really done a great job of stepping, stepping forward and helping them uh, mentor them for their careers. Uh, Mike Siegel, our faculty representative. Um, Steve Harrell, who's in uh, financial aid. My buddy Steve. Uh, uh, Dean Belfield. Uh, uh, Dean. Boger, Dr. Mary Bath Boger, Jack Wagner, who's the president of our uh, NJIT Alumni Association, uh, Chuck Dees. Um, again, there's so many people here that, that I can thank, and I apologize if I've missed anybody. Um, Stacy, you've helped me since I came on campus in human resources, um, so th thank you. Um, and again, our best attribute is our people here. Um, some personal thank yous I want to send out there. Um, let's see, uh, one of my dear friends, Paul Lee, who's here, Coach Lee, um, Ken Dempsey, David Pump, Steve Keller, Steve Gladstone, Governor Cody, Sean Cody, uh, Wally Kennedy, Gene Mahan, and uh, all, all the former players I've ever coached um, from Quentin Richardson, who played in the NBA for 10 years, Bobby Simmons, uh, to Rashawn Berno, who's one of my favorite players of all time. He's like a son to me. All the coaches in the New Jersey metropolitan New York area. I see Nick Marinella in here today. I know Coach Hurley was planning on coming today, but he hadn't, could not be here. Um, Dennis Gregory I see over there. Um, some former coaches here, TJ Tibbs. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> Jarrett, Jarrett Check, famous Jarrett Check over there. Um, and last but not least, sorry to drag on here a little bit, but um, the second family that, that you know, I have to thank is my immediate family. My mom, who's here with me. Oh, and Phil Clichy, I saw Phil uh, come in there. I'm sorry, thank you, Phil. <laughs> thank you, Governor. Anybody else? <laughs> I'm trying not to look at certain people because Kenny Dempsey, who's been around for a long time as assistant, he said, whatever you do, he, he grades all these press conferences. He goes, whatever you do, you can't cry. So I'm doing everything I can. <laughs> so with my own family, I can't promise that. But um, My brother Rob, his wife Gina, uh, his children, Rob Jr., Aaron, Liam, and Sean, who's in attendance today. All right, Sean. Uh, my sister, Christy, uh, her husband, Dan, their children, Shannon, Jen, Julia, and Quinn, they're watching down in Florida right now. And then, uh, last but not least, my own family, the loves of my life. Uh, 
uh, sorry, Demps. <laughs> uh, Taylor, Brian, Tatum, and Kelly. It's, uh, it's been a long, hard path for Dad to get here, but just remember how much I love you guys. And uh, last uh, but not least, everybody who knows us from our camp days, which includes tens of thousands of people that have come through our Pocono Invitational Basketball Camp in a hoop group. Um, you guys, everybody knows him as the chief, and it's my, uh, my dad, Bob. So, Demps, I guess I failed because I, I couldn't make it through without a little breaking, but almost made it. But I, I really, I am so honored, humbled to be here as your head coach. I can't wait to get rolling next year. We have a great group of kids. We have a great group of recruits coming in and just so, so excited um, uh, to, to be your head coach and to be here at New Jersey Institute of Technology. Thank you. We okay? Okay, we'd like to take a couple questions from the media. Uh, we will also break in a little while for one-on-ones if you need that, for some refreshments, et cetera. Um, any questions for Governor Cody, for Dr. Bloom, for Lenny Kaplan, or for Coach Kennedy? Josh? Uh, Josh Newman, Esbury Park Press. How, how much more important does uh, the continuity become when it's an older team like this? I think it's very important. I think, um, you know, we were built really to win, you know, this year or next year. Um, having the five seniors, you don't want to have anybody come in and start changing a lot of things on them. Um, we have uh, two young men at 1,000-point scorers, a young man who scored uh, 1,700 points in three years. Uh, you want to kind of keep that momentum going, and that's about building on what we have here. Um, I was speaking with a lot of coaches, and they talked about changing cultures. I, that's not what we need. We have a great culture here, started with Jim, uh, Brian was a big part of that, and that's what we need to build up from. Jeremy Schneider, Star Ledger. Coach, you know, with your time under uh, Coach Angles, what, what's the biggest thing you learned, and I mean, what, how do you maintain the success that I mean, the, you guys have had in probably the most successful era in the program's history? Um, probably the biggest thing I, I've learned under Jim was, uh, is to never make any excuses. So. Um, no matter what the situation was, um, there was never, we, we never let anything come in, in the way of, of, of our culture and our success. And what I mean by that is, you know, one of, the, one of the first things that when I came on board, it was the summertime, we don't have air conditioning in the summer, and, you know, we brought the guys together, and it was hot. I was sweating, Jim was sweating. <laughs> He brought the kids together and he said, I don't want to hear anybody complain about anything about the air condition, you know, you know, blah, 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 blah. And from that point on, our guys, you know, uh, credit to our team, they, they never once, you know, even, that even, never even entered their mind. So every summer, all day long, for the last four years, we've been in the gym working out. And nobody, it's not an excuse. Uh, or no excuses are accepted. So I think that's the biggest thing I've taken from Jim. No matter what obstacle is in front of you, it can't be used as an excuse. You just have to find a way to, to get either over, through, or under that obstacle. Jimmy. Jim Hake from Associated Press. Brian, 
obviously it's very hard to go from being the good guy as the assistant coach where everybody loves you to now you're going to have to be the hard guy and being a head coach. How tough is it to make that transition with, with an entire team that basically knows who you are and yet you're going to go from being the beloved good guy to now going to have to be the guy making the tough decisions and being the guy who's not the good guy anymore? Well, I, I think the guys behind you can tell you that, um, you know, <laughs> Coach Kennedy always wasn't the good guy. He, <laughs> oh, so you're not smiling, oh, so. <laughs> um, so yes, it's, uh, you know, some of the things that, that I've thought about, you know, when we were here, uh, Jim, was, uh, I mean, before today, uh, one, of my, one of my good friends, George Sorless, just retired from, uh, from high school coaching. He was a girls high school coach at Rumson Fairhaven, won 700 games, he's in the Hall of Fame. And George gave me a great co quote. He said, you know, uh, be yourself, you know, it's an Oscar Wilde quote, be yourself because everybody else is taken. So I'm gonna be myself, Jim. And, uh, um, you know, it is, it is a transition from being the assistant to the head coach, no question about it. Uh, and, and, and while the continuity of the program is going to stay the same. Um, Jim and I are different people, and I'm going to be myself. And uh, one of the things that I really like to do with my players is, is to, and Demond's actually said it, you know, um, in, in the press is, I like to instill, instill the utmost confidence in my guys. You know, and I mentioned Osa before. Osa, I think really the only time I yell at you is to do what? To shoot it. Yeah, shoot the ball, Osa. Shoot the ball. Um, but yeah, it, it is going to be a, it is going to be a change, Jim. You know. There's no question about it, but um, you know I, I, I've, I'm, I'm ready for it, and I think the kids, with the senior group of kids, um, they're mature, and they know what I'm about, and I know what they're about, and um, you know I think the transition is going to be really easy. Jeremy, coach, you you had players openly campaigning for you to to take over when the, when Jim left for Columbia. How good did that make you feel, and how what does that say about this program that? The players got the guy they wanted. Um, I, I, I think Dr. Bloom and Dr. Ka and Lenny Kaplan made a great choice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it feels great. Um, you know, these kids, when I first came here um, in my first recruiting class, Tim, Damon, Vlad, um, Rob, uh, they believed in what I was telling them, and it does, when you get when they get there to, to school, it doesn't always happen that way. But I believed in in what was happening here at NJIT. Uh, I believed in everything that uh, Dr. Bloom, uh, Dr. Fay, and 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 Lenny. Uh, I believed in their vision. And I believed what Jim was was all about, and it came to fruition for them. And that was the greatest, you know, the greatest thing that I saw over these four years was that coming to fruition. So um, for them to come in and say that they wanted me to be their head coach, again, I'm, I'm humbled and honored to, to, to lead them next year and uh, lead them to, 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 to great success. Me again, I'm gonna ask the hard ones. Um, Brian, can you comprehend that a day like this takes place considering when you left basketball and you went on to, to work on Wall Street. Can you, can you comprehend that a day like this has taken place in such a short period of time, only four years, you go from being completely out of the game to now being a Division I head coach? Uh, it's, it's, it is a lot to, to take in, but um, you know, again, uh, those people that I thanked along the way um, have been so supportive. Um, I think if I wasn't if I wasn't grown into the basketball world, uh, i.e., you know, my first 30 years of my life at camp every day and being around it, it probably would have been a lot harder. But basketball has always been a part of me. It's always been in my blood. Um, even when I was working on Wall Street, um, I was, you know, for one year I was the volunteer assistant at Greenwich High School, you know. Um, my first year trying to get my Series 7, Series 63, and 66, I had a bright idea of, you know, coaching a high school team at the same time. So um, 
And then basketball has always been, even when uh, I was working, I was always taking my kids up to, <laughs> up to our camp for father-son or father-daughter. I coached their teams. I, uh, I was involved with our Western Basketball Association. I ran our, our little town up in Connecticut. I ran their thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, if, if I wasn't involved so much in basketball throughout my whole life, it probably would have been a little bit more of a difficult transition. Yeah, it's, I feel truly blessed, um, you know, to, to be here. And, you know, again, I give all the credit in the world to, uh, you know, to the team, to the, the former players that I mentioned and, and the current team right now. And uh, it's, it's a great, it's, it's an unbelievable opportunity, but one that I, I, I fully, you know, I fully understand, grasp, and can't wait to, can't wait to get going with. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, the ESPN3 telecast will continue. Uh, in the other room, the voice of the Highlanders, Matt Province, is here. He's going to talk with Coach Kennedy one-on-one uh, -on -one and with some of the student athletes as well. Uh, everyone here on the dais and the student athletes are available for one-on-one -on -one interviews if you need it. Please stay for some refreshments. Again, we thank you for coming out on this happy day for NJIT. Congratulations, Coach, and we will see you at the Zoom.